Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to this channel. And today, I have nothing planned, but I figure that I would um, say anything, uh, or at least make a video on something. Um, so, I think I... Hmm. I think I might want to touch on a few subjects, uh, perhaps, um, just what I'm thinking, what I'm excited for, possibly, uh, movies, and, um, possibly just things I thought of in recent, um, days, possibly, and, uh, the way I'm going to handle this video is I'm going to pretty much pretty much treat it um, unexpected. So I may be from this distance, maybe be over here, maybe back here, maybe over here or over here. I don't know. I don't know why I just tap the top of the mic. Anyway. So, the first thing is probably going to be uh, movies, and I'm going to be looking over here every once in a while just to make sure that my level is okay, and uh, yeah, so um, October is coming up, as you may know, and there's two movies I'm looking forward to. One is The Joker. And the Joker is really cool because um, Joaquin Phoenix is playing the role. And um, it's a highly anticipated movie for me. And uh, I think the director has an excellent view where um, he's going to portray the Joker as someone who's very troubled. And I think the biggest problem they have with the movie, um, or at least the problem they think they're going to have, especially from critics already tuning in on this, is I think they're kind of worried that people are going to take uh, violence pretty, um, that, that someone may get inspired and do something really stupid, and um, but honestly, I think I haven't seen the film yet, so I wouldn't really know how they're going to do that, but or how much the movie inspires the violence and that. But um, pretty much that goes with every movie that comes out. And why the Joker and why not, like, I don't know, Mission Impossible or... Um, I don't know, there's, there's so many movies involving action and involving that type of tone they're going for, um, but I guess this movie, why it's being so heavily criticized is because probably probably Joaquin's jo Joker is so relatable and people that may feel for the character of the Joker or may have a relatable experience may go and do harm somewhere because of the role which is just I can't help but think about the um everyone involved in the Joker and uh, well, movies in general and then something stupid happens something horrible and uh, as a person who filmed it or as a person who uh, you know like Joaquin Phoenix playing the Joker the main part uh, the person who wrote the script uh, I couldn't imagine how they would feel to to see that result uh 
I'm sure that's how uh, Christopher Nolan felt uh, with Christian Bale after making the, I believe it was either, the, either it was either the second movie or the third, it might have been the third, where um, the movie theater, uh, I can't remember much about it, I just remember that there was a shooting in a movie theater where it was showing the, um, well, the, the Batman movie. So, I I will say I'm very excited for it. I like the Joker character and everything. And I think Joaquin Phoenix is going to do a great job. But, it, al- it almost makes me, unfortunately, a little hesitant to go to the theater. Especially during the first few days. Um, the other movie I'm looking forward to going to see. Oh, yes. Maybe I will just make this about movies because I have a lot to say about a certain movie. But the other movie I'm looking forward to is called The Lighthouse, or I think just Lighthouse. And it deals with uh, Robert Patterson, Pattinson, or Patterson, I can't remember, uh, the guy from Twilight, and he's going to play the new Batman. Uh, and William Defoe. Uh, William Defoe played the Green Goblin in Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man. And, um, he played in Aquaman as one of the, I guess, At- Atlanteans. And, um, he also played the voice of Ryuk in the, de- the Death Note. Yeah. So... It has them, and Robert Eggers. I haven't seen of any of his, his previous work, but I have seen the trailer for The Witch, which seemed pretty uh, disturbing in a way, but interesting. And um, I think the movie's going to be brilliant. If you see the, the trailer for The Lighthouse, um, you may notice that none of it makes much of a sense, and I think that's what makes it so great. But you can also tell from the style and the music that it's going to be something very original, but also a lot like The Shining. Uh, the Shining is a great movie. And I think that isolation in a lighthouse um, with two guys can really bring some interesting st- storytelling and character uh, development, which I'm really happy to see. So uh, if you haven't seen the trailer, go check it out, because it's pretty crazy. One trailer, Robert Patterson and uh, Willem Dafoe literally just go back and forth saying, What? What? What, 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 what? And then they go back and forth like they just, just saying what. And it's the greatest thing. They just start screaming it at the end. And then William, D- William Dafoe just gets up and throws a bottle at um, Robert Patterson. <laughs> he, he's missing like, strike you dead, Winslow. And he just starts screaming. And this water just like burst up on the lighthouse and crazy crap. I don't know. Very excited to see it though. So, um, yes, so I'm gonna sp- I think I'm going to spend the rest of this time talking about a movie I saw. Um, by the way, I have an idea. To wake up early one morning and film outside and do like a very my thoughts type of video. I don't know. I thought it'd be kind of cool. Sorry, I'm like I have a lot of like I ate pizza and I keep feeling like I either have to cough or burp and I don't know which it is. <laughs> and I'm trying not to edit anything out of this. 
So anyway, recently I have I saw um, a ghost story, not to get confused with the British ghost stories. Now I actually do have that on uh, DVD, and I'm gonna save that one for another time when I have the DVD to show, because I don't have it on me right now. However, I want to talk a little bit about a ghost story. So, I saw this movie two days ago, and, um, wow. Uh, I can't remember the director's name. Maybe, like, David, David Lowry, something like that. And, uh, he directed, uh, the new, like, Pete Mag Magic Dragon I don't think it was called that, but he directed that, and I wasn't too impressed with that movie. I was kind of, I just watched it for the sake of my mom, honestly. But he also made this movie called A Ghost Story, and A Ghost Story is about the perspective, basically, of a ghost, and what a ghost goes through in the afterlife or if someone because in the movie he decide, I guess he decides that he doesn't want to go to heaven and he rather stay on earth and um, stick around his uh, old house with his um, I, I don't know if it was his wife but I'm just going to say a girlfriend so, he kind of just decides to stick around, and, oh man, what a great movie. Very slow. I mean, there were some scenes where I literally thought I paused it, but then I realized I didn't. I'm like, holy crap, that's a long scene. Um, so, spoiler alert, I'm going to spoil this movie. Um, uh... Well, I'm gonna, I'll tell you when I do, like, the actual spoilers. Um, so, there's this guy, and his, he, he's, I think he's played by Casey Affleck, so Ben Affleck's brother, and in life he's a musician, and he, he one day just dies, doesn't say, I don't think, how he dies, or what he dies from. But he just dies, and he's in this hospital, he's dead, he has a sheet over him, and his girlfriend just leaves. But then, he, after a minute of the same shot, his body rises in the sheet. And he is then, he then lifts up, and throughout the entire rest of the movie, basically, He's in this Charlie Brown, typical, stereotypical ghost costume. And, wow. Who could have thunk that you could have made a movie out of this? Robert Eggers, or, sorry, David Lowry, who I believe was a writer, clearly knew what he was doing when are before making this. And he clearly made it so it's very easy to watch. Even though some scenes are very sluggish, it has very good visuals and very good shots. Um, and I really don't know what makes a good shot. I just, when I see it, I can understand, like, wow, what a nice shot. <laughs> so I don't want to sound like a, a movie snob, but um, to me anyway, some of the shots were like, oh my gosh, the last part in the movie, so I'm gonna, I might spoil it here, the last part of the movie, the ghost, like, he, he goes through time because time isn't the same for him as it is for us because he's a ghost. He can go in one room and come out the other 
and it'll be like another year later or another 10 years later. In one part of the movie, the ending, he jumps ahead, I don't even know how many years, like maybe, maybe it was 20, maybe it was 10, maybe it was 50, we don't know. And uh, I guess his house is destroyed and they're building this huge building because it's the future and now it's like a big corporation and they show a few shots of him going around this big, like, this big corporation, this big building, and it's amazing. Uh, just the feeling, the capture of emotion that you get from this ghost who cannot display emotion, but it can clearly be said through the visuals and through the shots they do. And it was... It was this type of thing that just made me so attached to it. I was like, wow, this go this ghost who can't show emotion is in hell. Like, it, he's literally in hell. Or purgatory, or whatever you want to say. And he ends up jumping off the building, and then he goes all the way back in time to when they first build the house. I had a really bad coughing fit there, sorry. But yeah, he goes way back in time where he's, um, where they're building the house and there was like a disturbing scene of where the Indians come and they kill them, the whole family that's building the house. And the movie is very symbolic in, in showing how, how time and what we do in life is so, in a way, meaningless. And it's really the people we're around that counts. And, um, and in the movie, the girlfriend puts, like, something in the wall, like a letter, and the ghost the whole time, or Casey Affleck tries to dig it out with his nails. And so, he goes through time again at the very end, from the beginning when the house was made, all the way to the future, and then, like, he sees himself eventually... And finally he gets the letter, and he, we never see it, but he just collapses with the sheet. Like his purpose is fulfilled. It was a very touching movie, honestly. It's one of those movies that make you really think after you see it. Kind of like a Donnie Darko, Memento, um... Uh, what's another movie? There's... Some of those movies, though, they just, they really make you, they really make you think. And, uh, I think that's a beauty in itself of filmmaking and script writing or whatever you want to call it. it. It's really amazing how you can, um, make the, the watcher feel a certain way even after it's done to make him think to what happened instead of blatantly telling him telling the audience there's a there's a definite um, power in that that you really have to learn to do um, and do it right because that's like, that's great writing but um, yeah great movie even though I just spoiled it for you I'm sorry <laughs> it is a good movie, it's only an hour and 30 minutes too which I was pretty surprised and thankful for. I don't think some movies, I think movies just sometimes go way too long than they have to. Like I saw, I saw Avengers Endgame. And I don't think that one in particular had to go, had to run any shorter. Because I enjoyed it all the way to the end, honestly. Maybe a little bit sluggish, but I guess they need their breathing rooms. Um... I really liked it. It was nice. I'm sorry, I'm talking about Avengers Endgame now. Uh, yeah, I like both movies. Um, yeah, I got a new movie too for that. Yeah. I should probably make another movie. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I have that many. I know I have like a new awful movie that I got on DVD. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, I was on California there. Yeah, did do 
does anyone live in California that I'm like offending right now or Alaska? <laughs> um, I think I already talked about this. How Alaska and Bush people, they just go way too much into that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I don't know, maybe I, I, I'm pretty sure I have an accent too. Um, I am from Ohio. Uh, but, yeah. I don't know, there's, there's a weird thing that they said recently that we say Reese's Pieces, or Pieces. Reese's Pieces instead of Reese's Pieces. But maybe someone says Reese's Pieces. I, I don't know. <laughs> I A lot of the words I don't. I mean, I don't know. I think it's just based off like what you were introduced to, honestly. Um, like, I always used to spell gray as G-R-E-Y, and I believe that's the one that's British, but we're supposed to spell gray, G-R-A-Y, and there's this whole big thing, if you use the G-R-E-Y, people will just lose their minds, <laughs> it's like, just calm down, it's gray, we don't need to make a big deal about this, gray G-R-E-Y looks more right to me for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, I, I think I've always found myself a bit more British than I am American. And I have been, I have been listening and watching to Carl Pinkleton and Ricky Gervais, another radio show. And I've been, I used to listen to that so much that I started rewording my sentences so instead of saying my i would say me because like carl would say something like it really does me head in instead of saying it really does my head in i'll i started like replacing my my's with me's and i'm like what's happening to me am i being reformed from these <laughs> podcasts and i thought that was really interesting i mean i guess people that who move another country, I guess they start picking up on their accent, and they may start to use it. I think that's kind of weird. Like, if you're a, if you're, if you're a resident in that country or whatever, and someone moves in and starts using your accent, it's just kind of weird to me. It's like, why don't you just use your own accent? What's wrong with? <laughs> but honestly, I love, I love Britain. Um, never been there. But, oh man, would I love to go to, like, Britain or, um, would I like to go to Britain, or wait, do they call it England or Britain? Am I being un, am I being politically uncorrect, incorrect, with calling it Britain, or, or am I doing that with calling it England? I'm not quite sure. The, the one thing you must know about me right off the get-go is I do forget names, I'm awful at geography, and I'm horrendous at anatomy. I'm probably more horrendous at geography, to be honest, than there's anatomy. I think there is, <laughs> and then more about grammar. Um, you probably already know this because yeah, you, see me, you, you see me right now talking. I always have a difficulty finding the last word or um, finding a word in general. Uh, not good at that yet. So, yeah, I don't know. This is going on way too long and I'm just ranting. But, um, oh yeah, I completely forgot. I'm doing the unpredictable. I'm sorry. I was supposed to be doing the unpredictable thing and I didn't do it at all. Or at least in the. I did it in the beginning, didn't I? Hopefully I did. If I did it, I apologize. I honestly don't know. I may or may not even put that in the title. Well, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, whatever this video was, I may just start like putting part one and part two to them because 
I'm making a lot of rambling videos, but I think that's what you guys like. So, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, alright, well, anyway. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yeah, sorry for the lack of content in this. I just wanted to make a video today, so, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you're asleep. Hope everyone's awesome, uh, healthy. Um, dreams are coming true. Awesome. Great. Good night.